Today we're going to talk about the GitHub workflow. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide that'll show you how to effectively submit your own pull requests to GitHub projects. All right, so before we get too uh, deep into the weeds here, we need to define some key terms and get really clear on what they mean. The first is the notion of the central repository. This is the GitHub repo that you ultimately want to send your changes to. This is like your organization's copy of all the code. So this is whatever ends up getting deployed into production eventually. Next is the concept of a fork. So on GitHub, you can go to any public repository and create a fork of it. And that'll go and create a full snapshot of that repository at the time you forked it into your personal account. All your work in this workflow is done against your fork first, and then you send pull requests back to the central repository when you're ready to commit your changes into you know, the, the final work and form. The next is the notion of a clone. You go ahead and clone a copy of your fork onto your machine and then do your work on that. And that's where you make all your commits and do your work. And then when you're ready to synchronize, you go ahead and push those changes up to your fork. And then you send a pull request from your fork to the central repository. That's the general gist to how the flow works. So now I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is set up a basic repository in our little organization here that just has a couple of text files in it. All right, and so with that, we now have a repository that belongs to our organization. We need to create a fork of this repository in our personal GitHub account, which we're gonna do right now. Once the forking process completes, our personal GitHub account will have a complete copy of the organization's repository at the time we forked it. We're gonna be doing all of our work against our personal fork. So we're gonna go ahead and clone that to our local machine here next. Go ahead and paste in the URL of our personal fork. And then we're gonna clone that to our local machine, change the working directory to that folder, and then get ready to do some work. And we're gonna do that work inside of a feature branch because you don't wanna accidentally commit against the master branch. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new little branch called update readme, and we're gonna use that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make a really quick, simple edit to this readme, and then we're gonna commit that. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up our git command line here. We're gonna check the status. So you can see the files that need to be changed there. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the uh, shorthand to go ahead and commit all changes. And then we're gonna push that commit into our remote called origin. And so the origin remote is whatever repository you clone from. And in that case, that's our personal fork. So we're gonna push that up. Looks like it went through. And if I go ahead and refresh the browser here, you'll see there's a new message from GitHub indicating that I can do a pull request. And so what this pull request will do is when I go ahead and create it, is it'll create an opportunity for me to merge this change in my local fork into the central repository. You'll see this little green button down in the bottom left corner here that says, you know, request can be merged. And that allows us to go merge things in. We can also go ahead and add line comments like I'm doing right now. And we can add other comments on the thread. We can effectively use a pull request as an opportunity to do a code review or make other comments about the nature of this change. And you can see here that this pull request is going into the master branch of the central repository from my feature branch. And that's the way you usually want to structure it. So now we're gonna go ahead and merge this in. And now this code is inside the master branch of the central repository. All right, so now I wanna show you how to synchronize changes that yourself or other people make to the central repository back to the local clone of your own fork that's back on your PC. So first thing we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and add a remote for the central repository. So we're gonna go ahead and call this remote upstream. Now I'm gonna go and grab the address for the central repo from GitHub here. Go ahead and copy that. And then we're gonna go ahead and set that right here. So you can have multiple remotes for one repository. Git makes it pretty easy to do that. And we're gonna go ahead and use the fetch command to download the latest version of upstream. And then we're gonna go ahead and merge upstream in with our changes. All right, and so now we're gonna go and do a little bit more realistic example of what happens if you have multiple commits you wanna send along in a pull request. 
Well, most folks like you to do what's called squashing a commit. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and commit three separate edits of this file. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Bang, bang, bang real quick. And by the way, the reason why people like you to squash commits is it actually makes it easier to review changes that way. So you only have to really look at sort of one commit at any given point in time. Makes it easier, particularly if you're working on a project with multiple people. So we've gone and committed three different edits. We're going to go ahead and push that up, refresh the browser again. And we'll go back to our little personal fork here and submit the pull request from there. All right, see the little notification from GitHub. I'm going to go and kick that off, and we're going to send it. And now you can see that we have three separate commits as part of this pull request, and this pull request can be merged. We're going to go ahead and shrink this down to one commit, which is usually a best practice for working with any sort of you know, decent sized organization. So this is called squashing a commit. And we're going to use the interactive rebase in Git to pull this off. So you type in git rebase i. And then you specify the branch name you want to rebase on, which is typically, you know, master. And so what we're going to do is we're going to leave the top commit alone. But inside this file, we're going to go ahead and tell it to squash these other two. We're going to save that little file. And get rebase is going to do its work on the first part. And then we have an opportunity to edit the commit message. So I'm going to go ahead and make this commit message a blend of all three. So that we added uh, three edits to the readme. I'm going to save that. All right. So now we've gone and taken those uh, three commits and squashed them down to just one commit. I'm going to go ahead and try to push this back to my personal fork on GitHub again. And what we'll see here is we got a failure message. Uh, it wouldn't let me push that back. So one of the things I have to do is I have to do what's called a force push. And that'll go ahead and blow away the changes that were there previously. And you'll see on the pull request I had a new commit ID show up. If I go and refresh the browser, the old commits will go away. Then I can go ahead and merge the pull request. And that's it. If you can get these basic steps down, then you've got GitHub figured out.